Okay, I'd like to talk to you about the illustrator of our next story of Stink. And our illustrator's name is Peter H. Reynolds. And you might be familiar with his work. Peter H. Reynolds, illustrator of Judy Moody, Mood Martian, and Stink and the Freaky Frog Freakout, began writing and illustrating in seventh grade. His teacher found him drawing instead of working on his math assignment. Instead of scolding him, the teacher suggested he illustrate a comic book to explain math concepts. His book was so successful it led to an animated film. His best known book is The Dot. Who here has ever read the book The Dot? I love it. Okay, how many people love The Dot? I'm super excited about that because this book is so popular that International Dot Day now happens each year. On this day, a million educators and students around the world celebrate classroom creativity. We will be participating in International Dot Day. So that is something we will be doing. It is on the 15th of the month. So next week we will be participating in International Dot Day. Yes. Isn't that picture day? Um, is it picture day the 15th? It could be. Um, I'd have to look the day. It's coming up. I didn't think it was the 15th. I thought it was like the 19th, but it could be. But we will be doing some an activity to celebrate International Dot Day. So this is Peter Reynolds back when he was younger because he does not look like that anymore. That's an older picture. So Peter Reynolds wrote The Dot and he's got just published another book that helps you with your, that celebrates creativity as well. And so he is the illustrator of the Judy Moody books and Stink books. So that is very cool. Now, I want you to remember boys and girls that this selection is an excerpt from another book. So it's just a portion of another book about Judy Moody's family. And that the main character here is her brother, Stink. Now, what do you remember about Judy Moody and Stink's relationship in our book, Judy Moody and the Mood Martian? What do you remember about their relationship? Yes, mm -hmm. um, Ivy. Yeah, she yelled at him. Did it seem kind of like a typical brother-sister relationship? Yes, it seemed kind of like a typical brother and sister relationship. Very good. Now, let's look here and stink and the freaky frog out. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for the critical vocabulary as we read. And I'm gonna show you what those words are so we can kind of be looking for them. Where are they? Here we are. So we're going to be looking for the words annual. Everybody say the word annual. Annual. Recited. Recited. And protested. Protested. And as we're looking for them, we're going to be stopping to write them on our page called new words. We're going to be writing them in our new word page. Okay? And we're going to want to know how it is used in the text and what does it mean. So we're going to be looking for those three words. We're going to be putting it in, a, in our how it is used in our text and what does it mean. Okay, boys and girls, that's what we're going to do. That is our story. So we're going to be looking for it and we're going to be writing the meanings. We're going to be looking for those words. Are we ready to listen to our story? Ready? Let's, and before we start, let's set a purpose for reading this. Why do you think we would want to read this story? Let's think. Do you think we're going to learn something about frogs? I think maybe we might because it's called Stink and the Freaky Frog Freak Out. So let's turn to page 62. Here's our story. 
Stink and the Freaky Frog Freakout by Megan McDonald, illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. Judy Moody's younger brother, Stink, has been finding frogs all over. Judy Moody's younger brother, Stink, has been finding frogs all over the place, at the pool, in his boot, even in the bathtub. When Stink and his friends visit a nature center to learn about frogs, they find out about the first annual Frog Neck Lake frog count. Before he can participate in the late night adventure, though, Stink has to study different frogs and the sounds they make, and pass a quiz. Okay. Annual. An annual event happens once each year. Okay, so boys and girls, this page has got something on it. What do you think this is on this page? It's a text feature. What do you think the text feature is? Alec, what do you think this text feature is? Um, what's the onomatopoeia words? Three, frog, and scream. Not really. The text feature, I'm going to tell you what it is. That was a good guess. It's an introduction to the story. And we need an introduction to this story because it's an excerpt from a bigger story. So we need to know what is going on before we can read this portion of the story because we're missing part of the story because it's coming from maybe the middle section of the book. Yes. I think what's going on is they're trying to get to the annual thing, but Yes, and we need to know that because we don't have that part of the story. We don't have the part of the story that's leading up to this section of the story. We're not reading the whole book. We're not reading the whole book, right, Teddy? We're only reading a small portion of the book. So they want to tell us things that are going on. So guess what, boys and girls? We have our first vocabulary word. We have the word annual. So we need to write that in our box we need to write the word annual let's write the word annual and we spell that a-n-n-u-a-l write that a-n-n-u-a-l and so how is it used in the text what are they saying about the word annual in the text? What are they, how is it used in the text? Mikey, how are they using the word annual in the text? They're using it. Like what are they saying? Look in the text. Put your eyes in the text. Find the text evidence where they use the word annual. It's in yellow. Do you see it in yellow? Yes, and what do they say? The first annual frog, the frog's frog, frog, the frog count. Yeah, that's what they say. So that's what we're going to write. We are going to write where it says, we are going to write First annual frog neck lake frog count. First annual. First annual frog. The frog neck lake. Neck Lake Frog Count. And then we have to figure out what does it mean. It tells us on that page what it means. 
What does it mean, Kelsey? An event that happens each year. An annual, an event that happens once each year. So it means an event that happens And we're going to put that underneath, boys and girls. That's going to go where it says, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means an event that, an event that happens once each year. And this is the meaning. Here's our meaning. Okay, that's our meaning. An event that happens once each year is annual. Okay. Does everyone have that? Almost. We're almost ready. Are you done? You still writing? Okay. You're done. Very good. Okay. So now we're going to listen to the rest of our story. Pretty good. Squeak! Stink listened to frog calls on the computer. He listened to frog sounds that he taped with his own tape recorder by sticking it out the window at night. Stink listened to frog calls on the way to school Monday morning and in the car on the way to swim lessons. Preep! Croak! Squeak! At swim practice, he tried some out on his friends. You sound like a duck, said Webster. You sound like a squeak toy, said Sophie. You sound like a sick pancho, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. See, spring peepers sound like squeak toys, and wood frogs sound like ducks quacking. You're quacked, said Webster. Sophie and Riley cracked up. You guys sound like southern leopard frogs. A leopard frog sounds like a person laughing, no lie. Yeah, but nothing sounds like a sick banjo, said Riley. Nothing except for the northern green frog. It sounds like a loose banjo string. You know, like a rubber band twang. You sure are freaky for frogs, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. You should marry a frog. You like them so much. Hardy har har, said Stink. Stink could not wait till swimming was over. He had a great idea for how to learn frog sounds. He would need a comb, a balloon, two rocks, a can of spray paint, a rubber band, a rubber duck, some jingle bells, and that's all. Stink blew up the balloon and rubbed it with his hand. He clicked rocks together. He twanged a rubber band. Judy poked her head into Stink's room. Mouse, the family cat, squeezed past her. Stink, I'm trying to study my times tables and I can't hear myself. She stopped when she saw the pile of junk on Stink's floor. What? I'm using this stuff to make frog sounds. Here, I'll show you. Stink rubbed his finger along the teeth of a comb. This sounds like a chorus frog. Stink shook the can of spray paint. And this sounds like a northern cricket frog. Mouse darted under the bed. And this, ah, sounds like mom when she sees the mess in your room, said Judy. Hardy har har, chuckled Stink. You're croaking me up. Can you please shut your door so I don't have to hear Froggle Rock all day?
Stink squeaked his rubber duck down the stairs. He snored up a storm while he made a snack. He shook the can of paint, clicked the stones, and jingled the bells. Wood frog, pickerel frog, cricket frog, he recited. Stink, keep it down, please, said Dad, poking his head around the corner. I'm on the phone. No spray painting in the house, said Mom. Take that outside. I'm not painting, said Stink. Doesn't anybody around here know a northern cricket frog when they hear one? Mom crinkled her forehead. It's homework, said Stink. I have to take a test. A frog test, said Judy, coming into the kitchen. I have to learn frog calls, said Stink, for the first annual Frog Neck Lake Frog Count on Friday. Right, said Mom. It's a real thing. The test is on the computer, Stink told her. You click on a frog and it makes a sound. Then you guess which frog is making that sound. Multiple choice, said Judy. Easy peasy, she teased. I have a multiple choice for you, said Mom. You can go back upstairs and A, finish your homework, B, finish your homework, C, finish your homework, or D, all of the above. Recited. If you recited something, you said it aloud after you had learned it. Oh, does anybody see one of our vocab words? What vocab word do you see, Logan? Recited. Recited. So let's go to our next word box. And we are going to write the word recited in the box. So recited. So we have the word recited. And how was it used in the text? How was it used in the text? What does he do to use it in the text? Jensen, what does he use? How does he use it in the text? What does he say? Yeah, and how does he use the word? He says, what, he says wood, he says wood frog, pickerel frog, cricket frog, he recited. So let's write that, wood frog, pickerel frog, pickerel, What do you think that means recited? What does it mean to recite something? What does it mean if you recite something? You remember it, you memorize it, right? So recite it, and here's our definition. Means you set it up to say aloud after you to say aloud. Oh, to, oh no, actually this is a past tense. I'm gonna change this, boys and girls. Recited, not recite. So it says, you said it aloud after you had learned. something
thing we recite at school every day. Ivy? Yeah, this is the definition. What it means. What it means. Something we recite every day. Who knows? Okay. We do it here at school. Alice? The math part of UCC. Okay. Jensen? Prayer and prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. We recite those every day. The morning offering and the pledge. So recite it means you said it a lot if you had learned it. Recite it. Is anyone still writing? No? But, Stink protested. It's your choice, Mom said. Stink trudged back up the stairs with Judy close behind. And don't forget your non-frog homework too, Mom called. In Stink's room, Mouse curled up on his backpack. How am I going to learn all these frog calls by Tuesday? Stink asked Judy. He held out his notebook for her to see. You can't go on the frog count unless you pass the quiz. I'll help you, said Judy. But let's make it a game. Instead of rock, paper, scissors, we'll call it rock, balloon, squeak toy. How do we play? Close your eyes. I'll make a sound. You guess which frog it is. But we have to keep it down because mom won't like us doing frog homework first. Okay, come on, said Stink. He squeezed his eyes shut. Judy rubbed the balloon. She twanged the rubber band. She clicked the stones. Protested. If you protested, you said why you did not agree with a statement or an idea. Okay, now we have another one of our words. What is one of our words? Yes, Ivy. Yes, I know that you don't have room for it. What is one of our words? Protested. Protested. So here's what you're going to do. I don't know why I thought there was room for three words and I didn't copy it on the back side. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your paper and you're going to take your paper like this. You're going to turn it to the blank back side of the whole thing. Back side. And... You can draw a box, and now we're going to do the word protested. So now we're going to write protested, P-R-O-T-E-S-T-E-D, protested. And then somebody is going to tell me how did they use the word protested? Yes, Avery? What did they say? But, and this is like he didn't get to say more, but, and then being protested. And somebody tell me what does protested mean? What does protested mean? Alisa, what does protested mean? Can you please read? Yes, when you protest, you don't agree with something. 
with an idea or a statement someone agrees with. So protested means you did not agree, you, so here's our meaning, 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 you said, you said, why, you did not agree, why, you did not agree with a statement or idea. So you protest, you don't agree with it. If you wrote that before I wrote that, go back and check to make sure you spelled it all right because you may not have. So. You protest by saying, oh, but I don't want to, or I don't agree with that. That's what a protest is. did not agree with a statement or idea. So maybe you have a park in your neighborhood and the town has decided they're going to build something on the park land and you and your neighbors have a protest to protest against that idea, okay? That could be a protest. You can all gather together and say, we don't like this idea, and you can protest against it. Okay, are we ready? Oh, I'm looking at that picture. Now we know what Judy Moody is doing in that picture. What's Judy doing in that picture? Mikey, what's Judy doing in that picture? Yeah, because she's making what? Yeah, she's not like just going to shoot a rubber band at him. She's making frog noises. Meow! Mouse pawed at the stones. Chorus frog, wood frog, cricket frog, stink guest. Judy checked Stink's notebook. Sorry, leopard frog, green frog, cricket frog. Stink hung his head. Hey, you got one right, cricket frog. Come on, Stink. Just get super duper quiet and really listen. Okay? Ready? Ready, Freddy, said Stink. Judy rubbed, clicked, squeaked, and twanged. Balloon, stones. Squeak toy, rubber band, Stink said. That's leopard frog, cricket frog, spring peeper, green frog. Bingo, said Judy. She laughed, chuckled, whistled, peeped, snored, squeaked, jingled, and croaked until Stink knew pickerel frog from peeper, chorus frog from cricket. Yikes, said Judy, putting a shh finger to her lips. I bet they can hear us all the way at the end of Kroger Road. Do you think they call our street Kroger Road because of all the frogs? Because of animal frogs, Stink, not human boy frogs. Really? Stink croaked. Okay, close your eyes. I bet I can stump you. Ready? Judy made a zzz sound. Bullfrog! No. Wood frog, no, bullfrog. He opened his eyes. Zipper frog, said Judy. That was just me zipping the zipper on your backpack. No fair, said Stink. There's no such thing as a zipper frog. Mm. 
Meow. Mouse pounced on the jingle bells. Jingle frog, Stink and Judy said at the same time. They cracked themselves up. We gotta finish our not frog homework, Stink. Besides, you're like the frog king now. No, you're like president of the frogs. Now you just have to practice on real frogs. Squeak ink, said Stink. On Tuesday, Stink Moody, frog genius, passed his test with flying colors. Frog test, that is. Stink could not wait for Frog Friday. So there you go. So we found all of our vocab words. We did a great job. So good job, boys and girls.